Hello and welcome to the European Centre of Total Quality Management. The centre has always had a tradition of uh, organising innovative products and initiatives to help industry absorb uh, new ideas and practices which are proven and which are based on world-class standards. We decided to launch an initiative by the name of Excellence 001 which is aimed at industries of all sizes and covering different sectors. The aim of Excellence 001 is really to um, convince senior managers that in the pursuit of excellence and raising competitive standards they have to use an integrative, holistic, rigorous, continuous set of programs and initiatives to serve their uh, corporate strategies and to deliver value to their customers and stakeholders. The proposition that we're making therefore through this initiative is that excellence resides in the spirit of um, using all the drivers, all the capabilities at the disposal of any organization and particularly those that will deliver continuous and sustainable value to the customers and benefits to the organization. And the premise that we make through this series is that there are pillars of success that organizations need to focus on and pay attention to if they wish to become excellent. This session concerns itself with something which we may call a prerequisite, i.e. the leadership capability process. Without leadership, indeed, uh, organizations will not have a future. I hope you enjoy uh, this series that we put together for you, and I hope that uh, you will manage uh, to absorb the principle itself, uh, to derive some uh, uh, ideas and benefits from these first-hand best practice experiences that we've compiled together. And more importantly, I hope that these ideas can serve the purpose of assisting you in putting together improvement action plans and hopefully in the pursuit of excellence in your organizations. Uh, leadership capability process. I mean, first of all, um, just some thoughts about uh, what we mean by leadership. And I think that leadership is, starts with maybe the style of an individual, uh, maybe, you know, the inspirational energies. Uh, of, of, of a particular uh, executive. But at the end of the day, leadership is, is about creating an ethos of work. It's creating, uh, uh, if you like, uh, an audience that follows. Uh, some leaders lead with their minds, so they think uh, some, some leaders uh, preach the message, so they are prophets. But I think in most industries, we want the communication, we want, if you like, uh, the motivational aspect, but also we want the depth uh, of, of, of a vision, of a long-lasting vision. But at the end of the day, what characterizes leadership is, is uh, the, the, the alignment, if you like, the, the following uh, from, uh, from, from people behind. And uh, leadership is about creating an, a long-lasting impact. I remember the Chinese proverb which says, uh, of those great leaders, when they have gone, you know, they've died and gone, we say, we did it ourselves. Because it is about a legacy, it's about leaving something which is long-lasting. And it's not about loving or hating people, it's about respecting people for what they stand for, and respecting people for the depth of their vision. So it's not about popularity, it's about impact, it's about results. Hence the, today's session, let's look at leadership more as a process, that's something that will create that long-lasting impact. And leadership is about uh, feeling it, you know, it's, it's, it's about management style, it's about the culture of the organization, it's about the way the values are inculcated, uh, and it's about the work ethos is being deployed. And it is not about hierarchies, it's not about privileges, and it's not about titles or, uh, if you like, monetary uh, rewards. It's more about assuming that burden, assuming that responsibility. So I think from that point of view, it's very important for us to, uh, uh, if you like, agree uh, on these uh, uh, brief descriptions. 
if you wanted to uh, do use a checklist of uh, whether the leadership style in your organizations is working effectively or not. I mean, I suggest that you take these pointers, for example. Are your leaders within your organizations creating long-lasting uh, impact? I mean, are there some long-term outcomes which show that you are working on the right path, you're delivering your vision and mission, um, whether it's profit, market share, return on uh, shareholders. Um, and if you are in the public sector, as some of you are today, you know, how do you manage, uh, if you like, the resources that you have? How do you deliver uh, the needs of the community at large? And how you engage the people who are associated with your organization? From a short-term perspective, it's really delivering the business objectives, isn't it? So, you know, is it about cost reduction, is it about quality enhancement, is it about safety and the environment and so on and so forth. And again, uh, public sector, you're no different. It's about maintaining that reputation, maintaining that trust in you uh, as a deliverer of services to the community. And it's about optimizing customer satisfaction. The other thing is, leadership is about synchronization. It's about the wishful thinking, which is the blueprint, what we want to achieve, but also the how side of the organization. So it's linkages between critical factors of success or objectives and the critical fo uh, areas that must be improved, that must be managed. Unless you link the two together, you, know, you don't have a leadership process. You know, very often we talk about great leaders who blueprint but the, uh, the rest of the organization does not follow and there is no alignment and there is no corporate goal uh, deployment and there is no impact therefore. So that's a, a failed leadership and it's not a good example of, of effective leadership. The other thing is identify what a leader should do. What are the critical job tasks that leaders must do in order for, uh, uh, if you like, the optimum performance to be delivered? What are the knowledge capacities that they should have, what skills must they possess, what kind of attitude do they need to exhibit in order for the organization to behave in the way it must behave. All of these questions center around, uh, if you like, uh, a behavioral uh, uh, mindset, but also uh, a management mindset and also a competency mi mindset. And if we check uh, through all of these, we will be able to assess where the leadership process needs to be improved. And yes, we can shape and improve uh, leadership, corporate leadership, because we know that there is a process that we can manage. Just some examples of what world-class organizations say about leadership. This is Ames Rubber Corporation. They are winners of the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. And to them, leadership is the ability to direct a group towards a certain goal or result. Uh, we believe the only way to lead is by example. Uh, you know, it's, it's being inspirational. It's driving for, with the results orientation in mind. Quadrant a subset of the post office, uh, to them leaders must challenge the culture change that produces excellence. Leaders are not about being nice to people, they're not about status quo, and they're not certainly from the mindset that says don't rock the boat, you know, I don't want to be unpopular. They will make themselves unpopular because they want the organization to be successful. Therefore, changing the culture uh, if you like, to get the optimum out of uh, people's competencies uh, and harnessing the capability of the organization is part and parcel of the job of a leader. Royal Mail, the object of leadership in Royal Mail is to achieve the Royal Mail mission and values. You see, so it's not about being nice, it's about being effective, it's about creating an impact. Ulster Carpet Mills in Northern Ireland, they won the British Quality Award a few years ago. Uh, to them, leadership is about recognizing that the key to involvement and enthusiasm for continuous improvement is the high degree of commitment by the management team. It's about enabling, isn't it? A leadership style that disables or inhibits or stifles people's energies is, is not something that we would like to know about. So it's about optimizing, it's about harnessing, and it's about enabling, and it's about involving. 
Armstrong is another organization that has won the Baldrige Award. Uh, they say business excellence cannot be achieved without the active and personal leadership of the management team. Management must take charge and lead the organization to new levels of performance. Again, please observe the words. They all concur with their views. Leadership is about results orientation. Leadership is about engagement. Leadership is about harnessing. Leadership is about optimizing. And it's about using all the resources, all the capabilities that you have at your disposal. You know? So it's not the domain of the rich organization, and certainly it's not something beyond the, you, you know, the means that small organizations have. A quote from uh, the CEO and chairman of AT&T, this goes back a little while, he says, in my experience, every time I have examined a world-class operation, there is always a visible leader at the helm who believes in and puts into practice the fundamentals of servant leadership. Okay? Every organization you come across, every world-class case study is always, uh, uh, if you like, delivered because there has been strong leadership at the helm, driving the impetus, delivering a, a vision, shaping up, if you like, a future, and, and uh, enthusiasing, uh, enthusing people and exciting them and empowering them and everything else. So, you know, you will not find a successful business that has got weak leadership. Please try to prove us wrong. You will not find a successful business that has got weak leadership. All right. I mean, we have actually looked at um, what makes uh, good leaders within organization. First of all, leaders are concerned with the future. They're not concerned with the operational side. If they climb down from 40,000 feet, to the ground, uh, then you should worry about the future of your organization. Because they must see far ahead at the horizon what's going to hit the organization. You know, what does the, uh, uh, the climate look like? And they must make those decisions in anticipation that the organization will be able to cope well and deliver its objectives. So they must blueprint, they must really develop that path. They must be good at communicating policy and strategy positively, not just say, well, it's published in the newsletter, isn't it? Part of your appraisal this year, you will get, you know, an A5 uh, booklet that will tell you uh, what the organization is doing. That's not communication. That's an abdication of responsibility. Communication means that it's registered, it's understood, and people are locked in, and they're committed to it. That's what we mean by communication. A goal deployment process it's a communication process because all what it is doing is telling people what the goals and objectives are and what is their roles and responsibilities as individuals or as teams in supporting, uh, uh, if you like, the delivery of those objectives. Be willing and capable of changing and ab adapting. I mean, change is part of the job, isn't it? Change is not something we should necessarily, uh, uh, you know, veer away from or try to avoid. Uh, I mean, the enthusiasts of, uh, uh, if you like, learning and innovation and development will accept the fact that without twisting and changing, you know, you will remain in the comfort zone. And if you remain in the comfort zone, you know, that's the, the first sign of, uh, uh, if you like, extinction. Listening and learning from others. Being humble, you know, to know that the corporate organization is not just a few people at the top. The, you know, the bottom-up process is as powerful as the top-down process. Involving others, deploying, involving, decentralizing, engaging, if you like, is very important because, uh, you know, if you are process-oriented, that's what it means. It means engaging everybody, creating corporate ownership in the decision-making. Knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. Very simple question. Where are we today? You know, what are core competencies? How many of them? I mean, some organizations have never stopped to answer this question. What do we excel at? We do everything around here, but, you know, if you do everything well, as, as a mediocre organization, um, you know, you will always remain a mediocre. Wouldn't it be better for you to know what you excel at, what you must excel at, and then shape the business basically so that you're delivering on the core competencies that, that are difficult for your competitors to imitate, which the customer values 
and is willing to uh, buy from you on and which will give you a future so you might outsource some of the weak areas you might work through uh, partnerships uh, on the others and you always show a strong face to the customer because that's what the customer wants from you they don't want you to hold to own the whole value chain but maybe they want you to deliver optimum value to them and benchmarking is part and parcel of a leadership role you know the organization does not exist in isolation does it it exists in a a, 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 a a larger system and leaders must feel and touch the industry the markets um, you know to take if you like seriously messages coming from customers knowing what competition is going and that energy is vital for the future of the business they are scouts Sunday scouting is about leadership you know because you have to be ahead of the game you know you have to prepare the organization for the future develop and practice people's management skills you know management is about procedures and uh, uh, it's about processes uh, it's about numbers uh, and it's about information leadership is about people so again let's throw in another hypothesis an organization that has strong leadership is an organization that is sensitive uh, to people. It's an organization that believes that people are the asset. And again, please prove me wrong, there is no organization that can be successful uh, if it doesn't really respect its people, its employees, and engage them. If we did two PhDs on these, I'm sure that we will prove that you know, the hypothesis is proven and is correct and is valid and everything else. Show desired behavior by being a role model. Because leadership is about breeding leadership. So if you exhibit the right role, if you behave like a role model, you're more likely going to inspire others. Being inspirational means you are developing others. You're developing the next generation of leaders through your behavior, through those intrinsic uh, traits and you know, personality attributes. It's about learning. You know, leaders need to be developed like we do. So it's about you know, upgrading your knowledge and expertise. A leader can be a fool if they haven't got their facts right, if their knowledge is obsolete or you know, it's yesterday's knowledge because they speak in public, don't they? They attend functions, they represent the organization at professional association. So they have to be well equipped, they have to be up to date with their knowledge. So you know, part of the process is their development. And they have to engage the organization they have to have that bottom-up process of feedback of ideas of suggestions uh, if you like of innovations coming from the very sources within the organization leaders again in the same way that they absorb change and embrace change they also have to appreciate the enabling uh, 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 potential coming from IT for example from technology and new methods and principles of management they have to be politically astute as well, haven't they? So they have to know, be aware of the community at large. Um, they have to know about globalization. And they have to know about, if you like, the bigger threats to the organization. Cultural diversity is a big thing now. And I think leaders must be aware of that, you see. I mean, I think that this is not new. You know, the founder of Mars, the, uh, the chocolate, <coughs> When he came from America to the UK in 1934, and I think he came with uh, his Milky Way, the first bar of chocolate. 1934, at that time he said, I don't care who I employ here. I don't care about the color of the skin, what creed, religion, uh, den denomination, who they come from. All what I care about is that I will be able at the end of the year to measure them in terms of tons of chocolate. So here is an example of cultural diversity, you see, I mean, now we are, we introduced a new word into the dictionary and we talk about being sensitive to, you know, different denominations and different religions and, you know, equal opportunities and everything else. But go back to 1934, you know, some visionary leaders instigated it and they were applying it. But nonetheless, we must recognize that the world has moved on and the world has changed. 
So, here's an example of a small organization. I mean, you may be saying in this audience today that, oh, Muhammad is talking about the large, rich organizations. We are nothing like that. Wayne Wright, actually, is a small business that has won the Baldrige Award. And this is their process, if you're a leadership capability process. They went through a rigorous process of setting up a vision. And they said, well, our vision is very simple. We want to achieve total customer satisfaction. In order for us to do this, these are the critical factors of success or these objectives. Uh, we must ensure uh, cash flow because we are a small business and if we don't really look after our uh, cash flow, which is the lifeblood of our business, we will die. We must optimize our processes, we must base our work methods on world-class practices. We must not compromise quality. Six Sigma quality means non-compromise. If it is 3.14 parts per million, you know, that's near perfection. But if you don't put it as a target, you will compromise quality. We must secure jobs or we must strive to secure jobs. You note know the word associate. They treat people with respect. They don't call them employees. They call them associates. You are associated with a business. You have a stake in the business. So you are a stakeholder. The mission is try to pursue perfection in order to deliver total customer satisfaction. How do we do it? The strategy is standardization means create seamless uh, methods of work, doing the right things right first time, relying on enabling systems. Design for manufacturability, I think David and Steve will know a lot about this because it came from uh, the engineering sector. It means that uh, uh, you, you, know, you, you, you design for time to market, you don't have changes in between, uh, you do things right first time by optimizing the subsets within that value chain. Uh, assembly is their strength uh, because they are in, uh, I think, uh, printed circuit boards or electronics. And strategic sourcing and certification means that we manage our suppliers, uh, if you like, through, uh, uh, through excellence. We audit them, we classify them, we certify them, their, uh, their ability to do business with us. Again, the values. You see, we talk about respect for people. What does it mean? It doesn't mean just you have a statement on the wall saying that our people are valuable asset. Walk the talk. How do we audit that you really mean it when you say respect for people? Okay, you train them, you pay them good salaries, uh, you empower them, you recognize their contributions. Is that enough? It's not enough. Respect for people means really respecting the values that they stand for. Because when they join an organization, hopefully they join it for life or they join it for a long time because they know what their organization stands for. The values you inculcate within your organization are an intrinsic way of you to say we respect our people. We all share the same beliefs. These are the beliefs that Wainwright, uh, uh, if you like, uh, uh, you know, believe in. Continuous improvement. We want everybody to be part of, of, of the picture. Uh, we want to work with partners. We're socially responsible. Uh, we focus on the community. Uh, the passion for the customer and optimizing quality. And leadership or stewardship. These are their values. Okay? You know, and anybody who works for Wainwright, hopefully, will subscribe to those values. And if you have people whose own values are similar to yours, then I think it's a starting point, it's a fundamental point for saying we do respect for people. I think the enabling strategies is really how do you want to play the game? Uh, do you want to you lead? Do you want to follow? Do you want to play the, you know, the, the different tactics? Have you got ways and means of controlling your mission and its deployment? Do you review performance on a regular basis? The synchronous organization is really developing the organization, the softer side if you like, and then the, the change programs that you put in place to optimize the performance of the organization. They, they need to go hand in hand, you see. Very, very often change programs are disjointed. I mean, you would know the horror stories of a lot of re-engineering programs or IT uh, system uh, implementation programs because the hardware is driving while the softer side of the organization is always left behind. 
So, you know, having that, the, 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 the OD site may be in parallel with the structures and the infrastructures that you put in place is absolutely fundamental. And look, competitive comparison and networking, benchmarking. The battle is outside, the battle is never inside the organization. How many of your managers or yourselves do spend your time looking outside? What I want to do now very quickly, because I want to hand over to our speakers, is just uh, show you a model of uh, uh, leadership development which has been used at the Royal Mail. You know, it's the kind of thing that you have come across before, the 360 degree uh, uh, upward appraisal uh, system. Um, you develop a system where you bring your leaders together and, uh, and, and basically uh, they do their own assessment. You know, for first of all, uh, you know, they own the process so they have every right to say this is how well we consider ourselves, this is how good we think of ourselves, these are the kind of things that we must improve. So the self comes first and then the, as a team, uh, you know, they appraise each other. And then the feedback, there is a first stage of feedback, the le each leader receives feedback. How you're perceived by the leadership team and how do you self-perception, how do you perceive yourself. Then the most challenging thing is step number four because then you are in the hands of your uh, uh, if you like uh, subordinates it's the the, the peer group uh, feedback on leadership uh, and that's reviewed uh, with a team uh, and that process basically is reactivated after some actions have taken place so you get feedback from uh, the team of leadership you have got self-evaluation and you've got bottom-up feedback now this is a very innovative way of building leadership capability, isn't it? Because you are looking at it from all the mirrors, from all the angles. And you're getting some organizations, by the way, involve uh, external stakeholders. I mean, maybe Steve uh, will tell us if it is applied in, in his organization. But they ask the customers and they ask suppliers, what are your impressions of our leadership teams? You know, can you please give us some comments on uh, these areas that we would like to assess our leadership on? Um, because the external role of leaders is absolutely critical. In terms of managerial competence, um, I would like, uh, if you like, a leadership process where the results orientation is, is number one. I would like leaders who know the industry, who know the market, who really can shape the organization for the future. I would like leaders who are caring for the customer and sensitive to the customer needs. Uh, the people skills, we have said it, we have seen it in uh, different organizations. Their ability to manage people, inspire people. Being analytical at the high level and using their own judgment. In other words, as you know, management is not all black and white. There's always a difficult decision to be made. And a good leader is one who can exercise their own individual judgment based on the merit of the case, based on the facts that are in front of them, based on the arguments presented by, by the subordinates, uh, based on the pressures from outside, from the market. They are sensible people, basically, to make those decisions, exercising judgment, sticking your neck out, so to speak, you know, not being afraid to upset a few, but support the right cause. That's, str that's strong leadership. Solving problems, you know, Perfect organizations don't exist. We all aspire to be perfect. There's always crisis, there's always a storm on the way. And I think a good leader is somebody who says, don't panic, keep our heads uh, you know, down and let's keep cool about it and let's solve these problems. And let's make the sensible decisions. Long term. Japanese used to laugh at us, didn't they? They used to say, you know, in Japan, you know, we, we have visions, 20-year visions, and, and in, in, in the West, you're not even capable of putting together uh, a plan for 18 months. I mean, that was years ago. I think the world has moved on. But that's what has sustained Japan, is that long-term uh, outlook, long-term long -term perspective. And the self bit, isn't it, of the leader? 
because leaders very often don't have mentors, they don't have the feedback, if you like. And by having that process, it's an opportunity for them to say, hang on a minute, slow down, look at yourself against these criteria. Where do you judge yourself? The team, your colleagues who see you in a boardroom situation, they see you arguing the case, they see you presenting, if you like, your perspective on the process that you're on. They have a stake in what you do, so they can give you that feedback. The people you affect every day who are your subordinates, they can give you feedback as well. The customers and the suppliers and the community at large who see you out there, you know, and they have dealings with you, they are stakeholders in you as well. It's tough, isn't it? But it's powerful to get that feedback and reflect on your individuality and reflect on your style and develop that as a, if you like, a, a, a corporate process. Again, uh, what I would like to finish with is really the process, the leadership capability process. Because that's, uh, you know, that's really uh, what is important for us tonight. Yes, the individual is very important. Yes, we must choose those people that fit in the checklist that I have shared with you. But at the end of the day, leaders will come and go. It's the legacy that they leave behind. But it is also, if you like, the, the capability uh, that will carry the organization forward. And that is the process, you see. How do we set a vision for the future? How do we have a mission for the next five years or so? How do we develop strategies for uh, meeting short, medium, long-term uh, corporate goals? And how do we uh, put in place, if you like, the tracking devices that will tell us whether we are on the right track, whether we're delivering the milestones that we set out to deliver and so on. And how do we inculcate the right values to support the direction in which the business wants to go. And then how do we communicate our vision to everybody concerned by this journey with us. So the deployment is absolutely critical. And how do we review our performance? at all levels and how do we make that a dynamic process through which the organization can meet its various destinies and through which we can be effective because we meet our goals short, medium, long term. So that is what it is about. So please uh, try and get as much as possible out of today's session against this template which is a template used by Corning, one of the winners of the Malcolm Borges National Quality Award. I hope you have enjoyed the session and indeed I hope you have managed to derive some key lessons and perhaps some prompts from the conceptual side of uh, adopting excellence and from the application that uh, you have just uh, witnessed.